Chapter four is all about exponential and logarithmic functions. So we're gonna start by discussing exponential functions. Before we do that, we kinda need to define what an exponential function is. So, so far in what we've been doing, we've talked about linear functions where we have a line represented by an equation y equals x. We also know that we've discussed quadratic functions. These are the parabolas where y is equal to x squared. But an exponential function is a function that looks like this curve right here. It's represented by the equation y is equal to base a to the x. Exponential functions either grow or shrink at a really, really fast rate. You typically think of an exponential function when you're talking about money, so money that I invest, or perhaps the interest rate on maybe my credit card. It's going to grow really, really fast. So it can be a good thing or a bad thing. One thing I want you to notice though, as we look at these three functions that I have laid out for you here, in both the linear and the quadratic function, the variable x is in what I would call the base position. In other words, x is raised to the first power here in for linear, x is raised to the second power here in a quadratic. But notice that when I start talking about my exponential function, the variable, the part that changes, that x number that's changing, is now up in the exponent position, right? It's, it's ra it is the exponent for some base or some number a. And that's kind of the difference between equations that we're used to seeing and what we're introducing here in this section. So having seen what the picture looks like, let's kind of come up with our formal definition. We have the definition of our exponential function is listed as some function equal to a base raised to the variable x. Now, we gotta be on the same term here for our vocabulary. I'm gonna call this the base. It's gonna be the constant. It's gonna be a number that we're gonna see. And then we have x, which is our variable in the exponential position or the exponent position. So x is gonna be the variable. A, which is our base, is gonna be a constant, and it's all equal to f of x, or in some cases, y. That's how we're used to seeing it. Now we have some restrictions on this base A. The base A must be greater than zero, but it cannot be equal to one. So these are the two requirements for the base A. Now you might ask yourself, why is that the case? How come the base A has to be greater than, uh, greater than zero? Let's come over here for just a second and let's talk about A. If I let a be a negative number, a number less than zero. And I'm gonna raise it to let's say the one half power. Well, if you remember, if I have um, a number written in its rational form and I wanna rewrite it in its radical form, then the base A, negative A, goes underneath the square root symbol and it's raised to the first power. So the denominator is the index and the numerator is the power. And that's how we would write that. Well, think back. Can I take the square root of a negative number? No, I can't. So this negative a to the one half does not result in a real number. If I did the same thing here where I had negative a raised to the three fourths, remember the, the denominator is the index, so it's the fourth root of negative a raised to the third power. So a negative raised to the third power is still a negative. And so can I take the root, the fourth root, of a negative number? And it follows the same thing as a second root of a negative number. We cannot take the even root of a negative number and come out with a real value. So this doesn't work either for real numbers. So that's how come we're limiting our base A, or we're restricting our base A, that is, to all um, numbers that are greater than zero. In other words, no negative values. Now, what about the idea that A cannot be equal to one? Well, think about that for just another second also. If I have some base, I don't know, three, 
raised to the first power, then that is still three. No, no, let me say that a little bit differently, not raised to the first power. If I have the base one raised to the third power, right? If I want my base to not be equal to one, I wrote it backwards. So if I want my base to be equal to one raised to the third power, that's still one. If I have my base one raised to the 53rd power, that's still one. If I have my base one raised to the one millionth or one thousandth power, that's still one. So see, if I have a base of one, it doesn't matter what my exponent is because it's always gonna come back as the number one. So those are the two restrictions that we have on the base. It has to be greater than zero and it just can't be one. Now the next thing that I wanna talk about, cause we're gonna uh, be using the natural base of E in this, um, in this chapter. So it's kind of nice to see where the number E comes from or the base E, we're gonna use it as a base. E is a number that if you were to look on your calculator exists, okay? So just like pi is approximately 3.14159 blah 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 blah, the number E has a decimal representation, which is somewhere around 2.7182, blah, blah, blah. And E comes from this expression right here. So in other words, if I were to take one, add it to one over some uh, value in, and raise the whole summation to that same number in, I'm gonna get really close to this value, 2.718. And here's a chart that kind of explains what's going on. So if I were to let n be equal to the number one, then if I plugged it into this formula right here, I come out with two. And as I start increasing my value of n, into this formula, then the number that is resulting is approaching this 2.718 blah, 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 blah. Kind of like pi approaches 3.14. So all of that is just to say that as we are moving through this chapter on exponents and logs, understand that when you see the letter E, it actually is representing the number 2.718. So you just need to know that for the future. Okay, and that is kind of our definition of exponential functions. Now let's talk about graphing in, in the next video.